with the rest of my um, Art Snacks March Disemboweling, where we are going to go over the products, demonstrate a few, and um, talk about the prices and whether or not they're worth it. And since they sent me this handy little sample pad, I can use that to demonstrate some things. Fingers crossed, hopefully. So right now, we're going to go over the prices. Now, I pay $20 a month. This includes shipping, so it's just a $20 flat fee, or $200 a year. Now, this was a gift of a year subscription, so my mom paid $200 a year to get me art snacks. Um, this was something I requested that she do. She knew it was for review purposes. She's been amazing because sometimes my reviews aren't so very kind, but she still enjoys the videos anyway, so I'm glad that she can see that I am enjoying unboxing these things and reviewing these things, and it's not so much about the contents inside. The fact that I get to look forward to art snacks and sketchbox every month, that's that's like a present in and of itself. As a reviewer though, not as an artist. So um, we're gonna start with the KUM, or KUM, Automatic Long Point Sharpener. And uh, Art Snacks said that should be $10.65 retail. Well, I found the same sharpener on Jet Pins for $5.60. So there's like a $5.05 discrepancy for what Art Snacks is saying. So we're not off to a great start. Now, their Irojitin pencil, which is right here, um, I found that on, there it is, Dick Blick, for $2.33 open stock, or if you bought a set, you could get it down to $1.60. So the $2.39 retail is a little bit high. The Koenor Woodless Color Pencil is $1.04 retail. I found it on Dick Blick Open Stock for $0.75. Cents. Or if you bought a 24-piece uh, set, set and then pieced each pencil out per box, um, you could get down to $0.58. Cents. Now, I'm assuming they're not paying Open Stock prices for these because that would just be foolish, honestly, when you could buy sets and break them down. Um, so we have at least a fit, like um, a 25 to 50 cent discrepancy again. And considering how inexpensive the item is, that's actually a significant amount of money. So for the Posca paint marker, they said it was $4.50. Um, if you buy a set on Amazon, with including Prime shipping, which is free if you're a Prime member, you can get it down to, by breaking up the set, $1.61 or if you're purchasing them open stock, $2.89 from Durable Supply. Um, and you should check my description for links because I have linked everything. And please check the blog post for final reviews as well as financial breakdowns. The blog post is really where all of these videos feed into. So um, the last item they're giving me a price for is the Liquitex Professional Paint Marker, which was $6.99. Now I found that open stock on Dick Blick and I was bad and I didn't bother to price sets. Well, no, I did actually price the set and the, the set was actually like um, $4.19, like it was rounded up to four twenty if you broke down a set. So it's cheaper to buy them open stock on Dick Blick. And um, yeah, that's almost like, a t that's more than a $2 difference. It's almost a $3 price difference. So we have, con we have consecutively they have consecutively overpriced their items, except for the Irojitin pencil. So I'd like to see Art Snacks get better about pricing your pencils. None of these were particularly obscure sources. Dick Blick, Jet Pins, I think Durable Supply, which is also Marker Supply, um, that might be the most obscure one. They're a little, I, no, they're probably not little. They're located in Nashville, um, so I have an affinity for them living in Nashville now, but none of these were hard to find sources. I mean, even Amazon is cheaper than Art Snacks. So the total for my box was $15.76. And um, that honestly, that's about right because I factor in shipping on these. So I assume it takes about $5 or so to ship these boxes. Um, so if I'm paying 20 a month or 200 a year, $15.76, that's probably worth my money. And they sent me a range of supplies. So um, I am fairly happy, except for the fact that my Irojitin pencil is a duplicate from two years ago from Art Snacks. And I'm also kind of bummed out because um, last month, Sketchbox, who is my February winner, believe it or not, 
Sketchbox um, sent a set of Eurojet Jeton pencils and some open stock pencils. So I think it would be really cool if these subscriptions kept an eye on what one another were doing, but I went over that in my last video. I actually don't know how that shakes down. So let's, let's do some investigation. Now I already have a sharpened Kingfisher. This is the one they sent me a few years ago and I sharpened it during my last unboxing for last month. So this one has a sticker on it that I need to remove. And if it leaves sticky residue, you can remove that with rubbing alcohol as I demonstrated in a little quick video that I shared recently. Oh, come on you. These don't always wanna come off and they don't always wanna be unsticky. So we're gonna demonstrate, or I am gonna demonstrate the KUM automatic and it's a two step um, automatic sharpener for those of you who like long points. If you are like me and you're not actually into long points on your pencil, KUM Coom also makes other sharpeners that give a more um, color pencil style. So actually this is perfect. This one was sharpened with either this uh, sharpener or the wooden sharpener Sketchbox sent me. It was probably sharpened with the wooden sharpener. It's also a KUM. Great sharpener company in my opinion. Um, it was also sharpened with a KUM sharpener using the smaller hole. So we're going to set that right there. And I'm going to sharpen this Kingfisher with the new sharpener. So you put it in the sh slot one to peel away the wood. And already I can't see what I'm doing because my sharpening, my what's it called? The, rais the raisins. No, that's not right. Shavings. Sorry. I get weird. I get flustered on camera. My shavings get in the way when it's closed. So I'm opening it and I can see that some of my wood has been. Come on, focus. Okay, so that's what it looks like at step one. Now, for some people, this is a great tip to sketch with. It's a nice blunt tip. It's not going to be prone to breaking off. It's great for like rough gestural sort of things. Perfect for figure drawing. Um, so you might be happy with stage one. Empty it out. Let's do stage two. Stage two is just intended to sharpen the, um, the lead, not the pencil itself. Am I even going to get a point? No, I'm not going to get a sharp point. Okay, so other KUM not long point sharpeners like this one here, the woodcutter, they give a sharp point, a, uh, a sharp and short point, whereas the long point doesn't give an actual sharp point. It gives sort of a blunted tip. And I don't have a particular opinion about either point. I tend to prefer the short, the shorter point just because it doesn't snap as often for me, but I've never actually tried the longer point and I'm kind of intrigued by it and I want to try it for figure drawing. I think that would be great. So I am already happy with this sharpener. Um, it's sturdy, fairly well built. Um, I mean the, the shavings build up in a particular place, but that's not really Art Snacks' fault. That's more um, just like a minor design quibble. So let's crack this render paper open. And we're gonna use the one we sharpened with the long point. Kingfisher is a nice bright color. I tend, oh, it actually is easier to put down a significant amount of pigmentation. Let me, let me actually zoom in there. It's very easy to put down a significant amount of pigmentation. Let's try the other Kingfisher that was sharpened with the woodcutter and has a sharper point. So it covers, it takes longer to cover the same area. So for color pencil, if you're not doing large swaths of details, the long point might actually be the best choice for you. You might actually get more pencil for your buck. So that's cool. I learned something new today. We also received a Progresso. Oh, let me pull out a little bit. Progresso Coronor. 
Um, this is a woodless color pencil. This means the entire pencil is made from basically the core of a um, the core of a color pencil. So color pencils are made with different binders. Some are wax based, some have an oil base, some have like a kaolin clay kind of base. And I'm not really sure what Koinor is made out of. You guys should check the blog because I will probably have researched it then and I'll let you know. But it puts down a pretty significant amount of color. That's, that's pretty cool. Doesn't really smear too much. Let's see how these erase with the mono eraser I received in last month's Sketchbox. So that's the uh, Koinor. That's the Eurogeton. So both of them erase okay, not back to paper white, but you could definitely put some details in. All right, let's see what else we have. We have the Uni Posca fine liner, and that's interesting because do, 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 Derwent has released some fine liner paint markers, and Recollections has released some fine liner paint markers to knock to knock off of those. Um, and I actually haven't done any water tests with my Derwents yet or my recollection. So we could do that right now with all three. Now I know that Posca, Poscas are, um, first of all, if you're interested in Posca, I have a tutorial video up on how I painted Amaterasu from Okami using my other Poscas and I'll show you those in a minute. And I have a time-lapse video of me painting a black cat and I did both of those on black canvas, be or I'm sorry, on um, canvas canvas, not just black, one was white, one was black. Um, just, just because those are like tougher than paper and these will tear up your paper, at least my other ones will. So let's get this open and take a look at it. I'm already looking for a knife or a pair of scissors. I usually try to uh, try to keep one handy. I need to not have my phone on my desk because it is horrifyingly distracting. All right, that was kind of easy. I mean, it's also kind of compact compared to Ha ha, my other Poscas. Let's grab a pink, because why not? Sets. Are they both rose? This one's all in Japanese, so I can't tell. This is the nib on the fine. Let me post that cap. So it's like a teeny tiny bullet nib, and my camera did a really good job focusing on that. And this is the nib on my, I want to say medium fine. It's a bullet nib, and it's a little bit scrubby. And to get these things started, you need to pump them a few times, and then I like to store them upside down. And just like the Derwent markers, the entire nib goes in when you're pumping it. It's taking a minute to get the... All right, now we've got a little bit of... See if it'll focus. Yeah, a little bit of pink flowing to the tip. There we go. Awesome. Fantastico. So this is the um this is in mostly English, so that's fantastic. The PC1 MR, so it's um like a medium rose pin type with a 0.7 millimeter nib. So ooh, it rides really smoothly. That's nice. This is my much larger Posca. Ah, I'm off camera now. Puts down more paint. This is my Derwent graphic paint. Uh, what do they call these? Like paint liners, paint markers, pigment paper, Japan nib. And this has a tendency to leak like all over the place. The paint liners are also available in silver, and they actually put down a lot more paint, which should be a good thing, could be a bad thing. So let's do some water tests with these. All right, this is the Posca, and this is a water brush. Pull out a little bit. thing about Posca is that it is water movable until it dries. So it moves some with the water, and we'll be able to tell better once, uh, oh, look, no show. Not even when I added water. I mean, I didn't add, like, that much water, but I thought it would, like, soak through and be wet on the other side. But no, that's cool. All right, let's try 
minted the Derwent. And this is like kind of sloppy and gross. These have the mint, the, the, nope, not really going anywhere. Let's try the silver. Yeah, silver really goes. Okay, so, um, like brushables, like pit pins, these are, Poscas are water-based, but they're permanent once dry. So if you want to do blending and shading techniques, you need to get them while they're still wet. And I, like I said, I have a tutorial on how I do it. Um, other artists do it other ways. If you hang on and read my um, Uni Pasca review for these, um, I link a bunch of other artists who do it, or you can do some research yourself. You can find that at my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. That should be going live in a few weeks. I have to take a look at my schedule. It's written, it's just more about, like, things get cued. Uh, alright, so that leaves us with the paint marker. And these, as do these, and these, they all have a ball inside, and that helps distribute the pigment so it's really good to give it a good shake beforehand get that pigment all distributed and this one has to be started too and I have a few of these around my studio although I have never used them as much as I would want to ah this one got started a little quicker all right so These are acrylic. They do have a little bit of a scent. They are blendable with water. But, um, like I said, they're acrylic, so once they dry, um, they're not really going anywhere unless you use solvents that are known to dissolve acrylics. Um, I actually don't know if acrylic and alcohol are compatible. Um, I'll have to do some tests in the future, so check the blog for those but I'm not, I'm not gonna give a statement on that. So these show an opacity rating, if I can get it to focus, the full square, as well as the pigment and a light fastness, so that's cool. These are more intended for a fine art sort of application. I mean, you can use them for graffiti, you can use them for illustration, I'm not saying you can't, but by including opacity and light fastness in the pigment type, they're a little bit more focused towards artists and illustrators than say the Poscas, which don't really give you that kind of information. They give you a color name and they say they're water-based, but then they don't say anything about what kind of paint they use. Um, so that was a brief overview of the art snacks, what came in my art snacks, and I even used the render paper, and it still didn't show through despite what I used on it. So, I will see you guys again with um, my Sketchbox challenge and my Art Snacks challenge. If you are interested in hearing my final verdict on who won the Art Subscription Box challenge for March, the month of Beck, my birthday, the 19th, turning 30, what, what, um, you need to read the blog. Please do not assume these videos are a final verdict. They are just me kind of going through things and showing you guys what I got. Um... If you enjoy these sort of videos, if you enjoy these sort of reviews, um, please check out my Patreon. The money raised as a group is $15 a month to unlock the monthly art snacks and sketchbox reviews. Uh, last month we hit it just because like one person pledged at that level and thank you very much. Other goals include um, if everybody's con contribution totals $30 a month, I'm going to do an additional uh, alcohol marker or watercolor tutorial that month. Uh, I have to do one for March. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do it on negative painting. Um, and my $45 group review uh, group goal is a backer exclusive live stream where backers watch me draw a can ask questions and I will address them right there with demonstrations or even request to see me draw things for them. So. Um, if you think those goals sound great, if you want access to them, please consider backing my Patreon. I will see you guys soon with my Sketchbox Challenge and my Art Snacks Challenge. Bye, guys.